is the articulation. Uh, for the articulation, I really prefer a nylon coated stainless wire. You can see here that this is a 15 pound. It's relatively thin, which is nice for, obviously we'll show you the application for this and the thinness coming in handy. 15 pound is usually your overall size. And what I'm going to do is just pull myself out a, a sizable piece. And once you have that, we're going to take our first part of our minnow that we created. We'll just push our material back out of the way a bit there to allow us some room. Wrap that, put that through the eyelet. Pull taunt. And now we're, we have our articulation wire through the back. And now what I'm going to do is take some, some plastic beads similar to what you would find in a, a craft store of any sort. You can find these at your local fly shop as well. Very inexpensive. I prefer to use red. Take these, these beads and take both ends of your, your material there, your wire, and we're going to thread. I'm going to use four beads for this particular one. You essentially, you just want to use the amount of beads in order to create space between the back hook and the front hook to separate the articulation. Like so. Now we have our back of our fly and our beads. What I'm going to do now is line up the first hook. For this particular one, I'm going to be using a small cone head. This is going to allow a jigging action to the fly, allowing a up and down dipping motion like a wounded fish. We're going to place that in the vise. Like so. Start our thread again. Just like that. And I usually stop my thread right around the hook point as far as a measuring point. We're going to take our back part of our fly now. And for this first stage, just to measure everything up, I just take a few loose wraps around the hook shank here so I can have that hold it for me and then this way you can manipulate where you want that length to be and get it just where you want it and then finish wrapping up the hook shank and capturing your articulation material your articulation wire essentially just taking that that part putting it over your pattern just so it passes the cone some allow yourself some tie off room and just a few loose wraps here and cinch it down Wrap off that excess here quick. Doesn't have to be pretty. All this is going to be hidden. Can be very rough. The next step is you're going to push that cone back towards the the butt end of your articulation. There, just push it back and capture it with that thread. And essentially, we're just over the cone, and we just put it back over the cone again. Like I say, this part can be raggedy and, and not so good looking. It, it's going to all be hidden, and we're going to tie that off now. Just whip finish this, pull the tubing. There we go. And we're going to clip that off. That part is now done. The next step, essentially we're left with all this tubing hanging out over this excess. And what we're going to do is just push it on itself like that. You're just going to push it right back like your socks are, are winding up on themselves. once you get it to this point, you're going to want to remove it from the vise. This is where your needle nose pliers come in handy to aid in. Essentially, we're going to put this hook back through this hollow point of this material, this tubing material. So what I'm going to do is, it's difficult to show the camera at first, I'm going to put it in there first and then I'll show it to you. captured the tubing with the hook point itself and it doesn't have to go in very far because what we're wanting to do is just have that hook point catch put our needle nose under the hook point and against the bend of the hook push forward now we've pushed that hook through that material 
Now that material will not go anywhere. Now what we're going to do is just finish off this, this fly's head. And what we want to do is, you want to determine, just push against that, that tie-off point we just made and determine how big you want the head. Like where is your, your tie-off point? There's my tie-off point. I'm going to allow myself about another quarter inch of material past my tie-off point just to give myself some tying allowance, allow myself some added space to rough up these ends and create another tie-in point. We're going to grab our thread again, just push our material back out of the way. You can treat it very roughly, it's not going to hurt it. Start that tie-in point again. Like so. We're off the end. And now we're left with our rough ends, like so. And we're just going to take a few loose red thread wraps, just to mark our spot. And we're going to grab those th those wraps with our thumb and our our pinky, our foreign finger here, and just slowly pull back, just to cinch that thread down on there behind that eyelet. And this is where you can manipulate or fix any errors or any slipping just cinch that thread back until we've got a, a minnow-like head developed. Like so. I'm just going to take a thumbnail or what have you and push this excess up around our hook eye. Our Bigfoot toenail clippers once again here. Remove any of this excess. So, there we go. Capture some of those ends again and whip finish. And any uh, any strays or anything like that that's left on the hook eye here, you could take a cauterizer that are available in most of these fly tying catalogs now, or you could just do as I do here, just take a, a threading needle, heat it up with a lighter, and you just push that in there and you can see that little wisp of smoke. It just melts that plastic right out of that eyelet creates a nice smooth professional look to the end of the fly there. Remove any of those strays. Just melts them right away. And you can color this with Sharpie markers. So any colors you can create a brown trout, a rainbow trout. Essentially you're matching the hatch for your bait fish selection. Whether you're fishing in the salt or you're fishing for trout or what have you. You basically just match the bait fish that are found in, in your waters that you're fishing. And you can also give it a nice wounded look. And by doing this, this is a very simple step and very effective. We're just going to take a piece of marabou, red marabou here. You're going to peel some away from the end and allow yourself a good piece of stem. And we're just going to simply take that stem and we're going to push it right through the body here. Right through both sides of the body. And you can see our stem sticking out. And what I'm going to do is just pull on that and keep pulling on it until I find where I want that blood patch to be. Yeah, that's about good right there. So what I will do after I get my measurement, simply clip the butts out of your way there. Take the material and push on it and it'll suck up that end butt right up inside the body so it's a nice clean wounded mark. Epoxy the nose right around the base of your marabou, right around the base of your tail and as I said before you color it to match your specific hatch whatever body you're fishing and you've got yourself a wounded minnow to stand out to any predator.